But those tactics were so ruthless that even some of his own attorneys felt uncomfortable. The signal was clear. It was that if Goodell didn't do what Snyder wanted in terms of handling the Wilkinson investigation, those emails and those texts would be leaked. This one is juicy. We all know Washington Commander's owner Dan Snyder is just weeks away from selling his team to a group led by Josh Harris for a little more than $6 billion. We know that John Gruden and the email leak uh, was the catalyst that eventually led to Dan Snyder looking so bad in the court of public opinion that the NFL owners finally had a reason to force him out or could no longer cover his ass in good faith. What we didn't know is that all of this may have happened because Dan Snyder thought he was helping himself by leaking those emails Turn that shit out. Yeah. while also doing the commissioner a favor. I read this giant bombshell ESPN article about all of this and actually I walked away with an even more shocking conclusion, which I'll get to in today's episode. Plus I have a key update on the Alvin Kamara case in today's episode of... I'm gonna start with the Alvin Kamara case. Uh, New Orleans Saints running back Alvin Kamara has caught a break stemming from his battery charges in Las Vegas prior to the 2022 Pro Bowl. Initially, Kamara and three other gents found themselves in the legal hot seat after facing misdemeanor charges of conspiracy to commit battery and a rather intimidating felony charge of battery with substantial bodily harm for beating up a man named Darnell Green. A beating so bad, Green was treated at a hospital, suffered a broken orbital bone, was knocked unconscious, and suffered other injuries to the head, back, and neck area. I mention all of that to reiterate how serious this was. Now, according to court records, Kamara has pleaded no contest to a much lesser misdemeanor charge of breach of peace stemming from that brawl that took place in the hallway of Dre's nightclub. If someone ever breaks my orbital bone and then asks if they can simply call it a breach of peace in the court of law, I will tell them to go fuck themselves. Now, as a part of the plea deal, uh, Kamara has agreed to 30 hours of community service, so not even a full work week. And in an act of financial penance, Kamara has also agreed to fork over 105,000 uh, to the alleged victim for his medical bills. Now, during the hearing, Kamara noted that playing last season with Andy Dalton as his quarterback should also be considered time served. And the judge agreed. Now, originally, Darnell Green filed a lawsuit against Kamara in a civil court last October, seeking $10 million in damages from Kamara. However, it seems there was a bit of a legal wrangle as Kamara was never formally served with that lawsuit. Fast forward to July 10th, and lo and behold, a private settlement was reached between the two parties. Green's attorney, Tony Busby, who you may remember from the Deshaun Watson lawsuits, even took to Instagram to post Alvin Kamara's written apology, which was a part of the settlement. And it read, Dear Mr. Green, please accept my sincere apologies for the events of February 5th, 2022 in Las Vegas. I am happy that we were able to get on the other side of this unfortunate incident, and I wish you the best for the future. Talk about making amends, am I right? I foresee these guys becoming best of friends and Kamara jokingly telling Green to pick up the tab with his money when they go out for non-alcoholic drinks together. Seriously though, I don't know why Busby posted that. Uh, it was the written equivalent of this apology. <clears throat> I state my regret. Basically, to surmise, the private settlement reached between Kamara and Green is what allowed both parties to move forward with the plea deal in the court of law. Uh, I hope Green got close to the 10 million he was seeking. Uh, while Kamara avoided any serious legal punishment, what the NFL will do remains to be seen. Now, the league stated that they have been closely monitoring the situation, the same shit they always say. Assault and battery do fall under the umbrella of prohibited conduct and the NFL's personal conduct policy 
which is easy to see in this very hard to follow flowchart, but even without a criminal conviction, any player found guilty of such conduct by the NFL should receive a mandatory six game suspension minimum. But betting on what the NFL will do in terms of suspensions is like betting on a politician to keep their campaign promises. One of the promises I'll always keep is Today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Smooth sack summer. Today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash good sports. So when I say smooth sack, yeah, I'm talking smooth ball sacks, nuts, scrotum, the family jewels, tea bags, wee bags, the devil's PhD, testy stones, gonads, bean bags, the scrot. Okay, I made one of those up, but this, this little crop shaver, this guy right here, with its three precision blades is the best ball shaver I have ever used. The lubricating strips on this thing are legit. I'll never go down in that area with anything else ever again. The crop shaving gel is clear so you can see what you're shaving and that's pretty important in that sensitive area. So right now with my link, manscaped.com slash good sports, you can get 20% off plus free shipping when you get the ultra smooth package. It comes with the crop shaver, the crop gel exfoliator, and five replacement blades, plus the anti-chafing boxers 2.0, which now come in multiple color options and three packs, plus the jewel pouch on the boxers just makes your junk look more complete, if you know what I mean. And you do. All right, the big story, Daniel Snyder in the NFL. I read this article about Dan Snyder fucking himself over and I went into it thinking I was going to have a good laugh at Dan's expense. <laughs> and I did. But I also walked away thinking, this is a very calculated piece uh, the NFL wanted wanted published to help themselves in the lawsuit that they are facing against former head coach John Gruden. Seth Wickersham from ESPN wrote a very, very long article, uh, really an expose on how the John Gruden email leak sunk Dan Snyder, and I want to explain why. But if you've got about four hours free from your day, I suggest reading the article yourself. Again, it's long, but it is, it is fascinating. And the shit within this article just makes everyone look stupid. The NFL looks dumb. Dan Snyder looks dumb. John Gruden looks dumb. Mark Davis looks dumb. Everybody looks dumb. Anyway. What happened? Well, we all remember back in 2021 when the Wall Street Journal published the juicy emails between John Gruden and Washington GM Bruce Allen. And originally that story put the heat on Gruden because of the derogatory way he described NFLPA director Demarius Smith and using the term anti-football about people who uh, were concerned about concussions and CTE. Now the Gruden emails led to the coach's demise in Las Vegas, but they were kind of a byproduct of the investigation into Washington's toxic work culture that centered around team owner Dan Snyder. We still don't know who officially leaked the emails, but there are theories that Goodell did it, that head of the NFL Players Association, Demaria Smith did it, and a prevailing theory that Dan Snyder did it to deflect attention away from himself. But if Dan Snyder was responsible for those leaks, it may have been the dumbest thing he ever did <laughs> in the name of self-preservation, and here is why. Now, during an attorney's investigation into Washington's work culture that was originally started by Snyder and eventually taken over by the NFL, the league and the commanders both reached a common interest agreement. Uh, that they would not release any info without the other party's consent. Kind of a mutually assured destruction sort of uh, thing. It's still hilarious to me though that the NFL initially allowed Dan Snyder to start to conduct his own investigation into how poorly his team was run. Like how dumb do they think we all are? <laughs> uh, 
fair enough, we're, we're kind of dumb. The commanders were exposed, though, for treating their cheerleaders horribly, and then their team employees, both women and men, horribly. Dan Snyder said, okay, boys, I'll take a look into this, and the NFL was like, okay, yeah, do it. No, 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 actually, we need to look into this. And to save face, they slapped Snyder with the lightest punishment possible. And that was the end of it. Except... Snyder began gathering embarrassing emails from the league office and showed it to the league in a slideshow, a PowerPoint. We're looking forward to a little revenge this year. Pretty much textbook blackmail saying, if you try to push me out, these emails will become public. Dan Snyder and his lawyers gave what they, was expected to be a defense at the league offices in front of league executives instead of presenting a defense about Whatever it was that was in her report, which was, of course, buried, we never really found out what was in it. What followed was a slideshow of screenshots and emails of, you know, off-color or sort of vaguely embarrassing um, things that league executives had sent over the years. And it was a stunning, stunning presentation. Um, the point from Dan Snyder's lawyers was to try to argue that there was hypocrisy in the league office for judging Snyder. Like the blackmail PowerPoint became a known thing across the NFL according to this ESPN expose. Chat GPT, write and create a PowerPoint blackmail presentation so I can flex on the NFL and get that money. Please. And for a while, it worked in Snyder's favor. Snyder had gotten himself the leverage to essentially dictate his own punishment even though he looked really, really bad from the investigation. And that original punishment was uh, him temporarily stepping down from the day-to-day -day operations as commander's owner and a $10 million fine. After the Gruden emails were published by the Wall Street Journal and Gruden begrudgingly resigned, some of the blackmail emails that Snyder had collected began to leak out into the open, most likely by Snyder in an attempt to show that workplace issues in Washington had stemmed not from himself, but from GM Bruce Allen and NFL general counsel Jeff Pash. And they knew it was Snyder behind the leaks because he very stupidly leaked the emails to the New York Times rather than the Washington Post, a newspaper that just about everyone knows he hates and has hated for a long time. Snyder had the NFL by the balls for a, for a moment, and then he overplayed his hand and he tried to squeeze those balls too tightly because once the emails leaked, Congress was like, well, now we got to take a look into this shit. ESPN also suggests he wanted back into the NFL's good graces. Snyder thought leaking a handful of misogynistic and racist emails written by then Raiders head coach and longtime Roger Goodell antagonist John Gruden might do the NFL league office a favor. So he authorized a New York law firm to publicize them Multiple sources told ESPN. Dan Snyder could have accepted his very light punishment uh, that he in part had dictated and instead, he further eroded his relationship with the league and the owners, which now has led to him working through the sale of the commanders to Josh Harris and that group. And the real loser in this entire situation is not Dan Snyder. It's not the league who took a minor PR hit. And it's not even John Gruden. It's Mark Davis. Again, he was forced to force Gruden to resign, but apparently the NFL had the Gruden email and that information for several months and never gave Mark Davis a heads up. Probably because they knew he would tell Gruden, but also because he's one of the least powerful owners in the league. They don't give a shit about his opinion. And Davis felt like that this was a setup, like he was like collateral damage in some sort of bigger war right. between the league and, you know, its efforts to protect Dan Snyder of all owners. And after they hung up the call, Davis later told John Gruden, F the NFL and F Dan Snyder. It's John Gruden versus the NFL. 
The former NFL coach is suing the league and Roger Goodell for contract interference and conspiracy by leaking his private emails. Gruden is in the process of suing the league and he's winning the little battles along the way. After the 90 minute hearing, Judge Nancy Alf ruled in favor of the former NFL head coach, no dismissal, no arbitration. If he really wants to beat the NFL, he kind of needs Mark Davis to claim PTSD from the incident, which is the only true medical explanation for hiring Josh McDaniels. Why is Gruden's lawsuit important though? Well, it could be the thing that reveals exactly who leaked the emails. If Dan Snyder leaked them, the NFL kind of gets a pass, right? If the NFL leaked them, not only could he win his case, but the NFL would look wildly incompetent. But put on your conspiracy hat for a second here, okay? ESPN drops this article stating Dan Snyder leaked the emails. Dan Snyder is about to be out of the league forever. John Gruden claims that the league office leaked the emails. It's the driving force within his lawsuit against the league. While the ESPN article doesn't look great for the NFL, you have to ask why would they run it now? Maybe so Dan Snyder takes the fall on his way out, huh? And the NFL paints the picture that Snyder was responsible for the leak and all of the mess here, which would help them against the real threat they face in the John Gruden lawsuit. That's my conclusion, my personal opinion. You read that article and you tell me what you think is really going on. But to me, looks like the NFL helped ESPN write a really alarming article that ultimately makes Dan Snyder look like the dumbest person in NFL history. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube for more. <sighs> Law and Order Sports, baby. The show that just can't quit. There's no time for it to quit.